Good news of great joy, the angel said, for to you a savior is born. Peace on earth, the choir sang, for God reigns in the highest. Follow me, the star beckoned, for hope was born in Bethlehem. As we light the Christ candle, we watch for the Christmas story around us. Emmanuel has come and is coming. Come all ye faithful and worship God. Let us pray. God of peace, you hold the nations in your hand, yet know and love us all. By your spirit, you gather us. In Christ, you make us one. As we come together, show us who we are, what we can be, and where we should go. Through Jesus Christ, our rescuer, partner, and friend. Amen. Tonight, we tell the story of God's love in Jesus Christ, in scripture, poetry, and song. Our theme is taken from a Christmas song as we begin by asking, what child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch are keeping. Who is this child? What message does he bring? What kind of leadership? What way of living today? The prophet Isaiah promises that God's glorious love will be revealed to all humankind. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the hand of God double for all her sin. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the living God. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. 
Then the glory of the living God shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Christ is coming. Be glad and believe. B.C. A.D. This was the moment when before turned into after and the future's uninvented timekeepers presented arms. This was the moment when nothing happened, only dull peace sprawled boringly over the earth. This was the moment when even energetic Romans could find nothing better to do than counting heads in remote provinces. And this was the moment when a few farm workers and three members of an obscure Persian sect walked haphazard by starlight straight into the kingdom of heaven. The prophet Isaiah proclaims God's chosen one whose gentle strength will put things right. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I take delight. I have put my spirit on him. He will establish justice among the nations. He will not shout nor raise his voice or make himself heard in the street. He will not break a crushed reed or snuff out a smoldering wick. Unfailingly, he will establish justice. He will never falter or be crushed until he sets justice on earth while coasts and islands await his teaching. Christ is coming, be glad and believe. The Apostle Paul tells us how Christ makes us God's children, equal, beloved, and united. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. 
and if a child, then also an heir through God. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Greek or Jew. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Christ is coming. Be glad and believe. If we had been there. There are some of us who think to ourselves, if I had only been there, how quick I would have been to help the baby. I would have washed his linen. How happy I would have been to go with the shepherds to see the Lord lying in the manger. Yes, we would. We say that because we know how great Christ is. But if we had been there at that time, we would have done no better than the people of Bethlehem. Why don't we do it now? We have Christ in our neighbor. Why lies he in such low estate, where ox and ass are sleeping? Good Christians fear, for sinners hear the silent word is pleading. What does it mean that Jesus was born not in a palace or a comfortable home, but outside in a cave for farm animals? against the backdrop of an imperial occupying power counting its subject population in order to levy taxes, a servant of peace is born. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Christ has come, rejoice and receive.
let the stable still astonish. Straw, dirt floor, dull eyes, dusty flanks of donkeys, oxen, crumbling crooked walls, no bed to carry that pain. And then the child, rag wrapped, laid to cry in a trough. Who would have chosen this? Who would have said, yes, let the God of all the heavens and earth be born here in this place? Who but the same God who stands in the darker, fouler rooms of our hearts and says, yes, let the God of heaven and earth be born here in this place. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which God has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. He was called Jesus, which means liberator, deliverer, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Christ has come. Rejoice and receive. How can the fullness of the divine, far beyond our imagination, be expressed in the confines of one human being, one human life? Unstinting, unprotected, prepared for nail and thorn, constricted into maleness and of a woman born. A poem by the Apostle Paul tells the story. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Christ has come. Rejoice and receive. Where shepherds lately knelt. Where shepherds lately knelt and kept the angel's word, I come in half belief, a pilgrim strangely stirred. But there is room and welcome there for me. But there is room and welcome there for me. In that unlikely place, I find him as they said, sweet newborn babe, how frail and in a manger bed. A still small voice to cry one day for me. A still small voice to cry one day for me. How should I not have known Isaiah would be there, his prophecies fulfilled? With pounding heart, I stare. A child, a son, the Prince of Peace for me. A child, a son, the Prince of Peace for me. Can I, will I forget how love was born and burned its way into my heart unasked, unforced, unearned, to die, to live, and not alone for me? to die, to live, and not alone for me. The reign of Christ comes, not by conquest, domination and manipulation, but by gracious love, gladly given and willingly received. The reign of Christ comes near wherever people covenant together and say, Christ, we, we are, are your, your body. body. Live, Live in our, our hearts. hearts. Christ, Christ, we, we are, are your, your people. people. Govern, Govern our, our lives. lives. Christ, Christ, we are your witnesses. witnesses. Send, Send us out in your, your name. name. Paul reminds us that the story of Jesus is not just a tale to be told, but a new way of living. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. 
Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Rejoice, believe, and follow. The work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with the flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Luke tells us how Jesus, the Jew, came to his own people to reach out to all the world. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Rejoice, believe, and follow. It is not over. It is not over this birthing. There are always newer skies into which God can throw stars. When we begin to think that we can predict the advent of God, that we can box the Christ in a stable in Bethlehem, that's just the time that God will be born in a place we can't imagine and won't believe. Those who wait for God watch with their hearts and not their eyes, listening, always listening for angel words. Christ, the light of the world, gives each one of us light so that we too may shine with gratitude, hope, and love. And while we are physically separated from each other, God's spirit joins us together in one body. So receive the light that comes to you through God's spirit. It comes from the Christ candle. Receive the light. Hold the light, enjoy the light, and be thankful.
Let us pray. Christ among us, light of the world, heal our brokenness and bring us to wholeness. Ease our pain and bring us hope, strength, and life. Give us new heart, new hope, and a new song, that our prayers and deeds may be one. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. The first chapter of John's Gospel invites us to ponder the wonder of love's eternal mystery, touched and seen in the flesh. In the beginning, the Word already was. The Word was in God's presence, and what God was, the Word was. The Word was with God at the beginning, and through the Word all things came to be. In the Word was life, and that life was the light of humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There appeared a man named John, sent from God. He was not himself the light. He came to bear witness to the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was even then coming into the world. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw the word's glory, full of grace and truth. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Rejoice, believe, and follow. go in peace. May the love that made the stars be your guiding light. May the love revealed in Jesus be your hope and inspiration. And may the love of the ever-present spirit give you courage, joy, and hope now and forever. Amen.